Hey friends, this is Dave. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for watching as usual. Today I just wanted to give you guys some Rocket Lab updates we've had over the past week. There's been a bunch of exciting news, nothing yet on that very important anomaly investigation for Electron though. We still are waiting on that one. Before we dive into the updates we do have though, I hope you guys will do me a favor. It hasn't been a very good couple weeks for the channel, so if any of you guys watching do enjoy the videos and haven't subscribed, I hope you'll consider subscribing, and if you have, maybe hit that like button. Hopefully it'll help out and we can get back on the right track. With that out of the way, let's dive into this week's Rocket Lab updates. So, first of all, on Rocket Lab's official website, they have released a new page titled Reusable Rockets. Uh, cool logo here showing that the, you know, the arrow arrows are going in a circle, launch, return, launch again. Uh, a lot of interesting information, especially for newcomers to the company. I think a lot of us watching the channel will know most of this info already, but it does go to signal, I think at least, that Rocket Lab is getting very close to reusing Electron and reusability does remain a huge focus for the company. So just some information on Electron at first, the world's first reusable orbital small rocket, and just giving us a nice little diagram of how things will work with the kick stage photon here inside the fairing, second stage powered by the Rutherford. Obviously this part is still not being reused. This larger bottom part here is being reused. You have the nine Rutherford engines. The thermal protection system is applied for heat and pressure. You have the drogue chute and main chute to slow it down before it hits the water. And reaction control thrusters orient the stage for descent. Uh, definitely a cool page with some interesting shots and info. Looks like they're going to continue to update this page as they make progress on reusability. A uh, quick video they also did release recently just going over their reuse strategy for Electron. Uh, again, nothing too new and groundbreaking for those of us who have been following Electron's reusability path closely, but it's definitely some interesting stuff. And then coming back down via parachute. Uh, yeah, and you can see it on the launch pad here. Uh, there is also a section on the page, and, and again, a, a, another uh, layout showing how these things will work with the boat, the parachute, and everything else. Uh, cool pictures, by the way. This one is really cool. I like it quite a lot. We get to see a little bit of the wear and tear on the Electron as it comes back, and that red section for reusable, of course, as well. Uh, this is where we'll get the latest reusability news in these articles here. And then, of course, Neutron, uh, their reusable medium lift rocket, providing information on that as well. We, again, know a lot of these specs already. 13 kilograms to LEO downrange landing, which is going to be, I believe, much more common than this return to launch site. They originally did want to focus more on return to launch site, but it appears those customers really want that 3,000 kilogram capacity. So downrange landing is probably going to be the way to go for many of these launches. Uh, pretty cool pictures and diagrams for Neutron as well, and just information on the engines. So if you do want to check out this page, it is rocketlabusa.com slash launch slash reusable dash rockets. Nice to see Rocket Lab is putting a, even more of an emphasis on that reusability, and I really do think that they're homing in on getting a fully reused first stage Electron launched very soon. If it wasn't for this hiccup for this previous anomaly, we would be even closer to seeing that happen. And that last, last launch with the anomaly did have nine reused Rutherford engines from what I understand, and it does look very much like those engines performed fine. The anomaly happened on the second stage, not the first stage, so uh, as far as I can tell, the nine reused Rutherford engines at least went off without a hitch, something that got overshadowed by that anomaly. Next up, we do have Rocket Lab's twin spacecraft for Mars getting integrated. Uh, exciting mission to have them sending these spacecraft to another planet, something very few companies can boast about having done. We do get a nice picture of the staff here working on the spacecraft, and it will be making a 230 million mile journey to the red planet. 
Uh, the team has successfully passed their integration review and is proceeding with integration of the flight hardware in preparation for launch. Integration includes both the spacecraft bus with Rocket Lab manufactured solar arrays, reaction wheels, star trackers, separation systems, radios, and flight software, and flight instruments being delivered. The two spacecraft are planned for launch in 2024 to low Earth orbit aboard a new a Blue Origin New Glenn launch vehicle provided by NASA. Uh, it will be interesting to see whether that New Glenn vehicle is ready by then. Uh, there are whispers that they're getting closer, but really this vehicle has had so many delays, so we'll have to wait and see on that. Next up, uh, some posts by Harry Stranger on Twitter, who is basically the man at this point, as far as I'm concerned, on updates for the Neutron Launch Complex at Wallops, Virginia. I did share some of his posts briefly during my live stream, but I feel like a lot of people didn't notice that one because it was a live stream. So a little bit of new stuff here from Harry, as well as some previous stuff. First of all, we did have some, some high-resolution satellite imagery from the launch site showing updates, and you can see that they do have this land being cleared. It looks like it's getting ready for paving, uh, and this is the general construction area being highlighted. They also are next to Launch Complex 2 and Launch Complex 0A. Uh, cool to see the little changes here. This one, obviously, less of a high-res image, but you can see this slowly turning more yellow as they clear the land of grass and stuff like that. And uh, another image here showing the changes over the last several weeks. Now, other than that stuff, which we did share during the live stream, there is some new information from Harry where he uh, got his hands on some schematic diagrams of the planned layout of the launch site, which is very exciting. This comes via a post on NASA Spaceflight, so thank you very much to that user on NASA Spaceflight forums who originally acquired and posted this document. Uh, interesting to see how it overlaid exactly over the land here, basically seeing how it things will look. We can see the low road lining up perfectly there. I love how he did this. Um, some things we can look at is where the test stand will be, the deluge water containment basin, launch pad up here. I know it's, uh, you know, not the highest quality document here, but really cool to see how the layout's going to work. LNG tank storage pad, water tower, and all the rest. So cool to see, you know, how this is planned to shape up. I was really happy to get this document and we will keep an eye on this going forward, as I'm sure Harry will as well. So if you're interested in that, definitely do give him a follow on Twitter. He is, he is at Harry underscore underscore stranger. So thanks again, Harry, if you do end up noticing this video. Uh, next up, just an update from Amazon's Project Kuiper satellite test mission, where they finally did launch those first two Amazon Kuiper satellites into orbit. Now, obviously, this isn't a Rocket Lab mission, but we do expect Rocket Lab to work with Amazon at least providing some components, most likely reaction wheels, for future Kuiper satellites. So it's a constellation we do watch with a lot of interest. And I do think there is a lot more potential for collaboration between Rocket Lab and Amazon down the road. So Project Kuiper engineers have confirmed that KuiperSat 1 and KuiperSat 2 satellites are fully activated, generating power independently and communicating with Missions Operations Center. Hopefully, uh, if they are using those Rocket Lab reaction wheels, they are working as intended and everything sounds like it's going well with the satellites. They did launch aboard an Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral after being pushed off of Vulcan and ABL before it, so they really wanted to get these first two prototypes into space. Hopefully this means Amazon will be progressing with the full-sized constellation, and, uh, you know, again, Rocket Lab can get some contracts to work with them on that. There was a exciting launch, a uh, Rocket Lab payload sitting on a Falcon Heavy recently. This was the NASA mission to Psyche. I shouldn't say Rocket Lab payload. They did provide the solar panels via their Solero company, which they acquired for a mission to an extremely distant asteroid called Psyche launching above a Falcon 9. NASA did share a pretty cool video. We can check out some of this happening on October 13th. 
skip ahead to the good parts. Yeah, there's the launch. Feels a bit funny showing a Falcon Heavy launch on a video about Rocket Lab, but I just think it goes to show how, you know, these competitors can still work together on some pretty cool projects, and just because they both do launch doesn't mean that they both can't be involved in the same projects working with NASA towards those amazing scientific goals. Psyche is a very interested, interesting asteroid with a high concentration of metals. Some think it may be the interior core of a protoplanet that didn't end up fully forming, so we could learn a lot about Earth's own core by taking some measurements and learning about Psyche. So that satellite will be off on a very long mission to the asteroid, where I'm sure, and I'm sure during the way Rocket Lab's solar panels will perform admirably to power the craft. Uh, this also was a pretty cool picture I just wanted to share. I thought it looked amazing, even though, you know, it's not a Rocket Lab rocket, but just a really cool shot with the bird in front and the clouds and the, the launch overhead. Definitely a cool shot from NASA HQ Photo. And then this is a little bit of an older article, and I did share this during that live stream, but in case you missed that, I'm not going to go over all the details. I just wanted to highlight one small thing. Adam Spice, CFO of Rocket Lab, did mention their investigation into that failure. This was a couple this was a little while ago now, but what he said was Rocket Lab is continuing to investigate the September 19th electron launch failure. The investigation is still in its early days, and he didn't offer a specific timetable for completing it or returning Electron to flight. So what he said at that time was nothing right now would indicate anything different for return to flight compared to the previous two Electron launch failures in July 2020 and May 2021. Those two failures also involving Electron's upper stage and taking a couple months to complete their investigation and resolve those issues. And then once again, uh, this was an interesting story which could impact Rocket Lab down the line, not something they were involved with themselves, but there was a hearing with the FAA around their licensing process for launches and certain industry representatives, including people from Virgin Galactic as well as SpaceX, basically just saying that the FAA doesn't have enough resources. They are going to be too slow to keep up with the boom in launch in the next couple years, and that they really need to do. They really need to streamline their approach, get more staffing, get more funding in order to keep up with industry. They did say that a quote from a SpaceX employee was, "We see a train wreck coming," uh, citing all of the work that the FAA needs to perform. It's uh, definitely a pretty blunt statement, and I know SpaceX has been frustrated with the slowdowns with Starship and stuff like that. But hopefully, you know, this does result in FAA becoming a quicker moving, faster organization with more funding, something Rocket Lab will very much need as Neutron scales up in the United States for those launches out of Virginia. Uh, just wanted to share a quote that I found interesting from the friend Rocket Lab Pleb on uh, Twitter. He's kind of a fun guy if you want to check him out. Basically saying, most great investments begin in discomfort. The things most people feel good about, investments where the underlying premise is widely accepted, the recent performance has been positive and the outlook is rosy, are unlikely to be available at bargain prices. Rather, bargains are usually found among things that are controversial, that people are pessimistic about, and that have been performing badly of late. So it just seemed like a, you know, relevant quote given the problems Rocket Lab has had with Electron lately, and uh, really reminded me of the time when I did invest, when I did invest in Tesla back in 2019 or so. They were really struggling at the time, so a lot of people were saying, they were going to go out of business, and that was when I got the 15X. So definitely um, there is something to be said for, you know, those big outsized gains rarely come when everyone agrees that that company is doing well because the stock price will already reflect it. So I thought that was an interesting quote. 
Uh, one final note for today is just a quick article that was shared on InvestorPlace.com. I uh, don't want to put too much emphasis on it. This is just kind of a retail investor writing it who I believe, you know, taught himself about investing and stuff like that. Not unlike you or me, I suspect. But he does say that he sees Rocket Lab going up 100% likely within 12 months compared to overvalued space peers Rocket Lab's $5 entry point and it's well below that right now provides a wide margin of safety. Oh by the way one final note for today I do always want to keep you guys updated when I make a trade around Rocket Lab or any other company that I do talk about a lot in the channel so just for transparency's sake I did buy 400 more shares of Rocket Lab at a price of $4.29 which I believe is right around what it's trading today last I checked so uh, I feel pretty good about that price obviously it's not a huge number of shares but I was just getting that itch to add more I didn't expect us to drop to these levels again a lot of that I think did have to do with Peter Beck's sale as well as the unfortunate electron anomaly that did occur so may as well use this opportunity to add more shares while I can at least that's my thinking course every investor needs to do their own due diligence and make their own decisions i'm not trying to tell anyone else what to do here i hope you guys did enjoy those updates and found them useful if so and you haven't already please hit that subscribe button and that like button if you have already subscribed to help show this video to more people it'll be very much appreciated i hope you guys have a great day a great rest of the week and i'll see you in the next video bye for now